With explosions lighting up the night sky in Damascus, I'm reminded of the classic Edwin Starr song lyrics. War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. But that isn't quite right. I mean, in our national past, war has, at times, been good for some things. Take 1861, when Confederate soldiers attacked Fort Sumter in South Carolina. In spite of President Abraham Lincoln's best attempts to maintain the Union peacefully, those shots made war inevitable. And although the Civil War was agonizing and bloody, it was, after all, good for something. I mean, it ensured that this nation of the people, by the people, and for the people would not perish from the earth. War came again in 1941 after Japan attacked Pearl Harbor and Germany and Italy declared war on the United States. World War II was hell. But engaging in it was good for something. America emerged as a world superpower and helped end the Holocaust perpetrated by the Nazi regime. There's even a war of a different kind that has been good for something. In 1964, President Lyndon Johnson declared the war on poverty in his first State of the Union address. He addressed the deep inequality our country, in our country that had undermined the American dream. But out of this war have come things like Head Start, food stamps, Medicare, Medicaid. And even if they haven't solved inequality permanently, these programs have crafted the crucial social safety net that lifted millions from poverty. And then came 1971, the year that forever changed the way in which we use the term war. In June of 1971, President Richard Nixon declared the war on drugs. This was a brand new front in a brand new kind of war. No foreign enemy, no deep injustice. The war on drugs is actually a war on the very people it should have helped which led to a whole arsenal of new war tactics, which, to quote Edwin Starr, are good for absolutely nothing. The country had a momentary respite in the proverbial war on drugs when President Jimmy Carter then campaigned on a platform of marijuana decriminalization, a sentiment he still holds today. But old President Jimmy had bigger problems than the war on drugs during his presidency, and there wasn't a lot of traction. In 1982, President Ronald Reagan took the war on drugs up a notch when he declared illegal drugs to be a threat to U.S. national security. And along with his ride or die chick Nancy by his side, the Just Say No campaign was born. Not long ago in Oakland, California, I was asked by a group of children what to do if they were offered drugs. And I answered, just say no. Well, of course kids should say no to drugs, Nancy, but should it make grown adults who drank the Just Say No spiked Kool-Aid do this? Okay, all right, wow, wow in this war. But the war on drugs wasn't championed by Republicans alone. 1996, President Bill Clinton named General Barry McCaffrey, a current NBC military analyst, as the drug czar when he was chosen to head the Office of National Drug Control Policy. Did you catch that? Not a doctor, not a lawyer. He appointed a general. I mean, this is what happens when we define a set of public policies as war. And just what has this war yielded? In the past 40 years, the war on drugs has cost this country $1 trillion and 45 million people who have been arrested. Yet the war continues, and now the ball is in President Obama's court. More recently, the president unveiled his 2013 National Drug Control Strategy, which focuses the war on the science of addiction. That's a step in the right direction, but statements like the one he made in Mexico on Friday still leave us feeling directionless on this battlefield. I've been asked, and I, I, I honestly do not believe that legalizing drugs is the answer, but I do believe that a comprehensive approach, not just law enforcement, but education and prevention and treatment, that's what we have to do. And we're going to have to stay at it because the lives of our children and the future of our nations depend on it. So the, the comprehensive approach is commendable, that this president is taking this approach that, that rejects the false choice between an enforcement-centric war on drugs and drug legalization. He, he said that. I mean, finally, someone who realizes that this is not a war. Because I have to ask, what exactly are we fighting for? 
at the table. William or Billy Murphy, a former circuit court judge for the city of Baltimore and current criminal defense attorney. Matt Welch, editor-in-chief of Reason Magazine. Eugene Jarecki, director of the documentary The House I Live In, which looks at the failure of America's drug war. And Kathleen Friedel, author of the upcoming book The Drug Wars in America, 1940 through 1973. So, Eugene, I want to I start with you. I'm suggesting that, that, in fact, this drug war has yielded nothing. Has it yielded something? What has it accomplished? Well, it depends on how you look at it. For the people who are proponents of it, you know, of course, it's uh, they will claim that it's had an impact on crime or violent crime or the rest, uh, most of which is not borne out by any evidence. It just sounds good to voters. Mm -hmm. The reality on the table is that, uh, you know, we've been at this, as it said, for, you know, 40 years plus, uh, 45 million drug arrests. We've spent a trillion dollars over that time. And for what? We have 2.3 million people behind bars, the largest prison population in the world in hard numbers. And uh, drugs are cheaper, purer, more available than ever before. And they're used by younger and younger people. It's a record of abject failure. So it hasn't achieved nothing. It's achieved catastrophe mm. quite handily. Right. And so in, in this sense, Kathleen, I, I want to ask, are we... Should we be excited about what we are hearing from President Obama? If we have been in a war that has accomplished so little, is this a substantive new approach that we're seeing? Yeah. When I read the National Drug Control Policy document, I was cheered by certain things, mm -hmm. but I was incredibly disheartened when I realized that the language and the framework um, that President Obama is putting forward in this document is eerily similar. In fact, in some ways, the exact same language mm -hmm. as the Kennedy Commission in 1963 put forward when Jack Kennedy was looking for a whole new approach to drugs. And that language is, well, we want to be softer on the, the addict or the person who has a substance use disorder but we don't want an all-out militant drug war. Mm. But as long as you're supporting a regime of prohibition, the, the kinds of promises that we're getting from the Obama administration and that we got from Jack Kennedy are very facile promises, and they can't be delivered upon. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I want to play this for you, Matt, and, and get your response to it. This is President Obama in Mexico um, recognizing the kind of market relationship and international market relationship. Let's take a listen, and then I'll have you respond. In the United States, we recognize our responsibilities. We understand that much of the root cause of violence that's been happening here in Mexico, for which so many Mexicans have suffered, is the demand for illegal drugs in the United States. And so we've got to continue to make progress on that front. So, so what do you think? I think he mispronounced uh, prohibition of. <laughs> Demand for mm -hmm. prohibition of. These are two very important, importantly different categories. I mean, the president has not, don't look at his actions. I mean, he said for two or three years now, we are no longer using the terminology war on drugs. Well, great. I don't like the terminology of war. Yeah. I believe in what Wilco said. There's a war on war. Let's, let's yeah. do it that way. Yeah. But let's look at what he's actually done. He spends more money prosecuting the war on drugs. He has busted up more medical marijuana dispensaries hmm. by a lot than George W. Bush has. They're spending more money on drug interdiction in Latin America than George W. Bush did. So it doesn't matter. You can say, oh, well, let's do I mean, so, so, so tell me why. I mean, if, if, the, if the rhetoric is, look, we recognize that, there is a, that there's a market-based problem here, we recognize that prohibition or the demand for illegal drugs generates more violence, then, then why is this a, uh, an administration that has, that has taken this particular approach? We don't really know, but I think mm -hmm. there's two possibilities. One is just political cowardice. No one's ready to make that leap right now, especially the president, who, when he was running for president, was a lot more circumspect about the war on drugs. He talked about that as kind of a policy failure and these kind of things, but he's afraid to stick his neck out. But also there's institutions that have been built up over the last 40 years and even beyond 40 yes. years. Um, and those institutions mm -hmm. don't want this thing to end because it's kind of a great right, trend for a lot of people. Right. They run structurally no matter sort of who's... I, I, I have this... Uh, I'm looking at your face, Judge, and wondering, are we getting something wrong here? Are we missing some aspect We're, we're of missing the entire point. All right, it's prohibition that's causing the problem. Mm -hmm. And if we don't end prohibition, we're going to have this problem over and over, year by year by year. And to make matters worse, all of the institutions that are charged with enforcing prohibition are now addicted to the war on drugs. Right. Absolutely. And so they have this huge prison complex which grows. Mm -hmm. The prisons even lobby for increased sentences. How perverse can that be? Right. And so we have all kinds of economic interests. The police departments are bigger and mm -hmm. more powerful. Uh, the courts are bigger and more powerful. The prosecutors are bigger and more powerful, mm -hmm. and this part of the war on drugs is going to be one of the most difficult things Absolutely. to scale back. Yeah. But if we don't confront prohibition mm -hmm. head on, 
This is all just talky talk. Right, because that's what I'm thinking. It's, it's one of the things that the war on drugs is, is a job creator, right? It creates jobs in the sense of um, generating money for police departments, generating money for the prison industrial complex, taking a whole group of, of young men and women out of the labor market by putting them into prisons, right? So there's a way in which we might imagine that way. I, I might be getting that wrong. We're going to come back and talk exactly about these questions of policies and how race is also implicated in them when we come back.